If I... Or... Amazing. Vic, we live? Yeah, you're live. Okay, sweet. I'll take it. Uh, first first order of business is to explain Lawrence's absence. Apparently he's had some toilet issues. I did feed him dinner last night, so that could be the problem, but I'm doing fine. Anyway, a man with large thumbs is going to show up a bit disheveled in a little bit and probably start fiddling with those things on the screen there, but I'm going to take it for the meantime. Uh, welcome everybody. I hope you guys just liked our 30 second clip, our new ad that's going out to advertise what you can do with part of this peak design mobile system. Um, I think first thing is first, like it's what a wild week. I mean, launching Kickstarters is always really crazy. And this project has been going on for so long. Me and my, uh, me and Rob Jankura, who is the uh, the guy we hired from Specialized many years ago, our first like real deal engineer to come to Peak Design, we were working on these things in 2015, putting magnets in the back of phones, and you know we had identified quite a long time ago that products um, like Quadlock. I think we should absolutely mention Quadlock because obviously this is a market that they've dominated for a long time with really excellent products. I want to be clear that Quadlock's products are very thoughtful and, and certainly were, you know, part of the inspiration behind this, just using those products for a long time. But the issue was that Quadlock had, you know, decent UX on bikes and motorcycles, a little bit finicky to get into. And then when it came to things like cars and other places where you might like to engage in mounting your phone, hi, Mariah. Um, it it doesn't it doesn't do very well. It's clearly the magnetic products um, were, were a, a better functioning thing. So really, the impetus sounds like there's an elephant coming through. That must be Lawrence arriving. Um, and hello from Scotland. Nice to have you. Um, the the impetus was to create products that are both a hard lock and a soft lock. How could you do that elegantly? How could you do that beautifully? Um, and it, it took a, a really incredibly long time um, to nail down this system. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, speaking of elephants in the room that, that aren't Lawrence coming and crashing through the door, the elephant in the room is Magla, or excuse me, is MagSafe. And that is, of course, Apple's system. Can you, can you imagine, folks, what it was like for us having worked on putting a magnetic array in the back of phones working on that system literally for years, getting ready to launch it. We were going to launch a couple of months ago um, and then catching wind of online rumors that Apple is thinking of doing the same, putting a magnetic array in the back of their phones. It was, you know, it was a couple things. In part, it was an oh shit moment at first. Um, because it meant pretty clearly that we simply could not launch our system and have a magnetic array that competes with Apple's. Um, but then quickly we saw it as an opportunity. We've been working on all of the, the suite of products that make this system work, that is the accessories. And we know that we've got a huge head start over any competition on, on that. And so we began to see it as a positive. And then the question was, what is that system exactly going to look like? And we found out on October 13th when Apple launched. And very happily, we, you know, the entire engineering and design team came to the strong conclusion that our system is readily adaptable to, uh, to accommodate MagSafe. And that's where we're at today. We launched our campaign on Monday. It's Friday. We're, and we're 
we've been doing a hell of a lot of test and magnets this week and figuring out precisely what is that array going to be in the back of our phone cases and in the, in, in the, in the front side of all these accessories that make these things work. So, uh, that's kind of where we're at. And I, I think we're going to certainly be getting some, some, some questions in from you guys soon, but I also, you know, one, one other, one other thing that I think is at the very least interesting. We released tripod a year and a half ago. And at this point in the campaign for tripod, we had well over twice as many backers than we do for mobile right now. And I have to say, uh, I, I'm very surprised. I'm very surprised by that. Um, tripod is of course an exceptional product. It's truly differentiated. And I think, uh, certainly deserved all the, all the attention that it got and, and the reviews since it's been out have been phenomenal, but my personal opinion because we all work with phones, literally every single human who's watching this at least, and nearly a majority of humans on the planet interact with a smartphone every single day. So it's certainly my theory, and even, even after a week of this Kickstarter and seeing that fewer people have adopted it so far than Tripod, I believe that these products are gonna be more useful to more Peak Design customers than anything we have ever made. So I remain very, very excited about them. I think that they're, it's probably a little bit harder to understand the whole ecosystem of these products. Um, but it's going to be, uh, I, I think they're going to be an absolute joy to use. My, uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been lucky to become friends with Chris Burkhardt over the years uh, making camera accessories and having him be one of the first people to test it. When we sent him this product, the out front bike mount, he said very clearly, this is the best product you guys have ever made. And Chris doesn't blow smoke. He absolutely means that. I, I mean it. I mean it too. I really think it is. I think tripod is obviously a, an absolute engineering achievement and marvel and something that we're going to hang our hats on for a very long time as we expand that line. But this line of mobile products is, it's kind of my favorite. I can't wait to get them out in the world. So um, I saw a question come through there about tooling. Um, is how are we doing this, Vic, and at all? Are you guys reading me questions, or do you expect to retool some of these? Would you stick to the current sizing and matching as many magnets as possible? No. Uh, Green 214, great question. Um, basically, what we've done is we've tooled iPhone 12 cases for the TPU perimeter, the polycarbonate shell, um, but we've had a keep out zone in the polycarbonate, which is allowing us to make tool safe modifications once we dial in the precise location of the magnets. And, uh, you know, of course, we had foresight into the fact that we couldn't know for certain where the magnets desire to be. What's actually interesting about all the media kits that you guys have seen that we have out there, we've got these perimeter magnets, okay? They're trapezoidal shaped perimet perimeters or uh, magnets in the perimeter. And they happen to line up on the inner portion of the Apple ring. So you already get kind of out of the box compatibility for the media samples. But we have a lot of testing to go through to make sure and truly optimize this magnet location. Remember, we don't, we don't want to build products for a season or a year or two years. We're grateful that Apple defined this magnetic architecture because it means that we can build around it and make these things last like this, there's no reason this shouldn't be a 10 year product. This should last as long as you have a phone and it should go from bike to bike with you. And, you know, I, I think that's a, a really critical thing about these products. We're used to cell phone accessories being these trinkets and being kind of crap that you buy from Amazon. It gets the job done. And that is simply not the case with these. These are real products. That's why we said when they're serialized, we, we, we go through the extra expense, effort, and cost to put a serial number on these things because not only when you buy them, you're going to be able to resell these if you ever have a need to. They'll, they're they're going to retain value like all our products do. You can sell them on the aftermarket. And I, I just think it's a better way of treating products like this. So good question. 
Moment lens support. Yes. Um, moment lens support is, I mean, I'm in regular talks with, with Mark, uh, who runs moment. Um, we are still trying to iron out whether it makes more sense for moment to put our magnetic array and our ceramic insert into their cases or whether it makes more sense for us to adopt their bezel into our cases, the bezel being the thing that makes a perimeter um, around the iPhone. And to tell you the truth, I'm still just a little bit hung up. On the one hand, we don't want the additional complication of creating a new bezel geometry to slow down the delivery of our cases. Um, and we also think that, you know, it would be helpful for a moment to have a differentiated product that allows for that. Um, but it's certainly been one of the most interesting pieces of feedback. And we're going to go get some information and kind of quantify that soon. And then, because mine's already hooked up, so I'm going to try to figure that. Hey, Vic. How's it going? No, Pete's talking to you. Or is he talking to me? I think I was just talking, letting you know that uh, that, that it can be heard. When will the other models? Oh, hey, look at that. For the everyday case available, like the Samsung S10. Uh, Martin, I don't know that we will get to the Samsung S10. Honestly, it has a lot to do with... We're actually, we're actually literally hiring people right now to take on external case development, excuse me, like extra case development. Obviously there is a need. We we have heard from a lot of other phone case manufacturers uh, like Moment, Nomad, that, you know, iPhone, like all their sales are so heavily dominated by iPhone and that they regret going into these other cases. They just get stuck with inventory and they don't sell through anywhere close to what iPhone does. Um, it's tough not to hear that information and 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 hear their experience, and um, and and think about it. At the same time, we want to accommodate our customers, so uh, we're hiring more resources to accommodate more case design, and um, it, of of course we want more customers to be able to join this ecosystem. It's just going to be a matter of resources and how much demand we actually see for this for these products. Oh, hey, Peter. Why don't you, uh, why don't you like, say hi, man? Take it, take it. You know, that traffic is gnarly getting over to the dog patch. I understand it's COVID. You don't want to, you don't want to just keep talking. I feel like you were in a good flow state. I didn't want to interrupt it. Well, oh, boy, what a morning. You know what? I, I woke up this morning and I started listening to some collapsing horse uh, as I took my morning hot tub routine uh, reading through my emails. So, uh, my for, for my dad's actually out here visiting right now. By the way, I think he's actually vacuuming uh, the artificial turf that we were installing um, uh, a little bit earlier. That's the, uh, that, that's the that's the inside. There's no other inside. I mean, you just you got to tune into a live hangout to get that sort of behind the scenes Peter Daring Peak Design Gold. It's kind of hilarious. The last time that I was doing a podcast, actually, it was with. Um, uh, Art of Visuals, yeah, uh, with Prince McClintock, and all of a sudden this this noise started coming in, and it was like a musical oh. instrument. And I, and, and my mom was visiting in town from Minneapolis. I said, "Mom, I'm, I'm doing a podcast," and she goes, "Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just playing my ocarina, <laughs> 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 which is an instrument I had previously only known from Zelda: Ocarina of Time." Anyway. I bet there's a substantial number of people that are in the chat right now that know by heart which combination of the yellow C buttons on a Nintendo 64 controller to push in which order to play those songs. That's such a Absolutely. good part of the game. It's a good um, yeah. Oop, hold on. I got to go mute on my iPad here. I just want to have the chat pulled up live on my screen. Right on. Um, well, I heard you kind of doing sort of a, a high level sort of breakdown on the campaign and where we're at and sort of even talking about tripod a little bit. Um, Victor and the video team were so nice to display all of these products in such a beautiful way before me. So we certainly could get a little more hands on with any of them. Um, did uh, what I wonder is if, and maybe you said this and I missed it already is sort of like, here's, here's sort of the quick and dirty of like 
our history with Apple's MagSafe and sort of those recent developments in particular, because that's been like almost one of the most defining sort of things, little just like pieces of living history for us as the Peak Design brand that's happened recently. It, it is, and I did, uh, Law, I, I did spend some time talking about sort of the curveball that was thrown our way and sort of how we have how we have worked to to hit that and I, i'm sure that might generate some more specific questions which we're always very happy to get into uh it's a very open book here as folks know what i thought you were going to say and one thing i didn't quite get into is like why are we doing this right why mobile and and like you know i've said multiple times this has been such a thoughtful exploration for a long time um but the the, the I actually remember a very uh, sincere moment where, where mobile, like I kind of, we've been going down the mobile direction. Rob and I were working on that pretty concertedly. And we hit a brick wall where we had made an all magnetic connection, super strong poly magnets that grip the shit out of a phone. But when I was testing it on my bike one time, this is back when we had plug in headphones, I went over a jump my headphones yanked it up and it like I lost my my iPhone 10 screen and it was like a $300 replacement and that and a num number of other factors like said uh, we don't have the resources for this right now rob said i came on board to build a tripod for peak design i want to get back on that track and so we did and then this is when i had the iphone x actually okay i think it was it was it was 2016 I had just gotten it and I took my first ever pictures in portrait mode. I was on a motorcycle trip with my dad and he took these photographs of me that were so good. They would eventually go on my online dating profile. Um, and they, they were just, uh, I mean, actually, you know, as a measure of success, that's important. Um, but they were so the, the bokeh effect that they had created, like it just, it just hit me, you know, because I was someone who had literally formed a company, on the basis that you should always be carrying your camera with you. And I always did on, on capture. But the moment that portrait mode hit, it hit me like a ton of bricks that that becomes less compelling right now. And if we don't, yeah, we'd, back, yeah. we'd relied so long on sort of the, uh, the physical, you know, just like a camera, the space it physically takes to have that kind of optics and that size sensor, that still is super important. And we, we, we don't think that's going away. But then there's this other parallel thing of computational photography, which especially being in San Francisco and like having former Apple engineers on our team and knowing people that work at Apple, it's like you can't ignore that there's this other parallel path that creates like really compelling photography too. And it's sort of like just a... Oh, I don't know if you heard the video team cracking beers. <laughs> I did. So smooth. Uh, regardless, I mean, it's just like, it. I think, and I think our backers get it. You know, it's like, it's not like we're, it's an expansion that allows us to take on all forms of great photography in terms of the products that we offer. We're not sacrificing yeah. anything on the other hand. Um, if anything, I think it just makes the whole offering that much stronger. Um, yeah. Should we should we dive in on a few of these products in particular? Um, how how much did you talk about how these things might evolve over the next sixty days? Uh, I you know I I, I didn't um, I didn't spend time there. Okay, I mean I, I think that's a I, I, and I think for people that have have backed campaigns with us before, that's a uh, it's that's fairly expected, but it's still an interesting thing. You know like we try to thread the needle with launching a Kickstarter campaign and that product development is like pretty far along, but certainly not all the way because then we would just be sitting on our hands. Like you got to overlap these things in a pretty like <laughs> frankly terrifying way sometimes. So there's still certainly updates that are going to happen to these products. Pete, you had mentioned like, you know, we're getting our hands on iPhone 12s right now. We're sort of literally tearing them apart, looking at the arrangement of, of magnets and all sorts of charging coils and stuff. And, just the amount of tweaking we need to do over the next 60 days while the campaign's going on and a little bit after that to get these things to market will be pretty exciting. Um, the, yeah, and so I'm trying to see how these things are lay, laid out in front of me right now. Okay, so what are you gonna say, Pete? Uh, let's, let's go, let's just throw a dart and start with the bike mount, the out front bike mount. A couple things are liable to change. Number one, we call this mechanism at the top 
the widget. Okay. And it's got these little ears on it right now. Um, I guess that's kind of an internal name for what it's worth. And the buttons that are, are pushed right now, one button is, is, is what it takes. Now, because of the Apple design, we are likely going to have to increase the perimeter of the widget. And in order to kind of preserve the compact nature of what we're trying to do, we are also going to likely end up shrouding these buttons. Okay, so you won't actually be able to see these buttons from the top. Um, instead, they'll be covered up. And so it'll look a little bit cleaner, actually. It's going to be slightly larger, but it's going to be cleaner. Another thing that we're going to be doing with the out front mount is right now, in the largest bar size, um, it's a metal on metal connection. We're going to be changing that. We're going to be having a plastic insert live in this section here at the largest, I believe it's in inch and a quarter. It might be inch and an eighth. I can't re quite recall. It might be a metric thing as well. But anyways, in its largest setting, it's going to have a plastic insert here. And additionally, and this is something that I've been pushing for big time, the bolt here that ends up connecting these things is going to turn to actually a thumb screw, a trilobe. It's actually going to ship both with an M5 that you can tool, put in there in a tooled fashion, but I'm certainly going to be putting the trilobe that is a, a hand operable screw myself. And the reason is because I find it very useful to go from this flat riding position to then tilting it up. And the reason that, beca that became interesting to me on a recent mount mountain biking trip, when we finally tried it out with the iPhone Pro um, ultra wide lens. And the reason it's critical to use the ultra wide lens is because it does not have optical image stabilization. And so instead of the OIS system fighting to keep up with the obviously very jarring mountain bike ride, it just uses a big wide open super wide angle 4K sensor and the footage is beautiful. So, you know, there's always been, I, I think that like, Oh no. Oh, is it oh dear. why we're making these products to have both. What's the matter? No, oh, we lost you for Did you lose me? Here. I can hear you now. It's pixelated. God, oh, you were in such a, you were in the flow state too, man. Talking about 4K sensors on Ultra Ride. It's possible that old man old man daring streaming something on the old Apple TV there. You think that's it? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Limited Have bandwidth. You got me now again? Uh, we got you. It's a little pixelated, but you can keep waxing poetic. I was gonna ask Victor real quick. In the in the Kickstarter video, there's briefly some footage from Peter Lockett's phone, right? What was that? Was that ultra wide 4K footage or? That was just the iPhone Pro 12. iPhone Pro 11 on the bars yeah. of a mountain bike. So if if for for you guys following along, you, you can I don't remember exactly where it is, but you can scrub to that part of the video where we're talking about, but uh, specifically the out front bike mount and see some of that footage. Um, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. I'll say I've been using so. My wife and I, we've got two bikes, and so we got one old Schwinn with pretty traditional round handlebars, and we've got an out front bike mount on that. And then I've got another bike that's way nicer than I deserve or need. It's a new Canyon, and it's got aero bars. Because if you look at Lawrence Lander, you definitely think this guy's optimized for aerodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> but the aero, the aero bars are interesting because it's not a perfect cylinder. So our the rigid out front mount actually doesn't work on them. But the, the universal bike mount works tremendously well on it, which is super cool. So, oh yeah, let me, Vic's telling me to show that you can rotate the widget by in little increments on this thing, kind of clocks into place with detents. It's really satisfying to click around. Sort of similar to a lot of products we've made in the past, they double as like phenomenal, um, what are those things called? Fidget cubes, fidget spinners, all those things. I know that the, uh, I don't I don't celebrate that as a feature. I just want to I just want to make really clear. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's and that's okay. fine. That's it's, that's an opinion to have. And some people have different opinions about our stuff, but that's one way to do it. <laughs> uh, out front bike mount. Okay, so we were talking that the widget, which is you'll see on all of the hard locking products, which are the ones to my right, which are on the left side of the screen. Those are the ones that Pete had mentioned, there'll be some changes going on there subtly some stuff to the industrial design, which we will keep backers in the loop of as they sort of as it evolves and i already saw some points people were bringing up in the chat about like 
make sure to test it with gloves or if you've got big, you know, kibasa fingers, which luckily some of us do have, we can make sure that the buttons are super pressable. Um, a thing that I, I, I've been meaning, I think we need to add a little more info on the page about, and you mentioned it, Pete, is that now it's got two buttons on it, but the reason for that is just so that you'll always have access. You only need to push one of those buttons to have both of the teeth disengage. So I've got my personal phone, my old iPhone XR, I've got it on here. And then if I'm on the bike, I reach around and I just have to press it with one button and sort of peel it off of the mount. Um, and I can just do that also, with I mean, whatever. It's 2020, Lawrence. We, we shouldn't be prioritizing for handy, handedness. Yes. You know? I think that, yeah. You know, and as, as sort of lib liberal coastal elites, we're always trying to think about those things, making sure that we've got everyone covered. No favoritism. So ambidextrous, that's how our stuff works. Um, did Pete, did you have any? Oh, yeah, and another thing, just to clarify, you said it, but just to make sure it's clear. So it comes with this low profile, uh, um, I don't know if it's an, I think it's an M5, but just a little low profile screw to keep this thing as stealth as possible. I shouldn't have worn a black shirt. Uh, and then that bigger, gnarlier knob that lets you on the fly tighten and loosen it so that you can go into that filming mode, that's an additional option likely. Again, we'll keep you guys posted as that comes along. And always excited to hear your feedback too, but uh, your feedback backers, not your feedback, Peter. Sorry. Noted. <laughs> uh, any other hot... Oh, what were you going to say? I was going to say hold up the creator kit real quick. Okay, let's if, go over if, that. If, if you're ready for a gear shift, is that okay? Let's shift on. Let's shift ahead. So I don't think it necessarily comes across in the video perfectly. Um, and also we have internal debate about how much we should be advertising this. But this connection system, which allows you to go yes from the capture camera clip, yes, Arca tripods, yes, quarter 20, yes, GoPro. And that's the last one that I want to think about here. G GoPro, like the point of view mount is a really interesting camera mount. And GoPro makes an excellent camera. They really do. They keep pushing camera technology forward. I don't think they're given enough credit for that, but they do. The thing is, is that I'm a little bit lazy. And I'm a little bit, I've got my iCloud, which automatically uploads things. I don't have to mess around with it. My phone battery is always charged. And it's just such a slick system. And so when, when we were pushing for the creator kit, we don't even advertise this in the video, but the way that I'm going to use that is I will have one of those on my helmet. I will attach that to the sticky point on my helmet. Here's the rationale. Do you look like an idiot with your phone on your helmet? Absolutely. You do. No question about it. You look dumb. You look kind of dumb with a GoPro on top of your helmet as well. We have to remember that. And the difference is this. When you have a GoPro up there, it's literally riding up there all day long. And when you have a creator kit, it's lying down, it's felt on the, on the you know to, to your helmet, it's pretty low profile. When you actually want to get the shot, you grab your phone, whether it's off of your bike mount or out of your, from your pocket when you're skiing or wherever it may be, you press record and you go like that. And because we have such a slick attachment system, it's one-handed, it's blind, and you're filming the thing that you actually want to be filming. Right, and so right. it was deemed too dumb looking to put in the video, but I, when we do a deep dive on the creator kit later, that is going to show up because- I think my, um, I think my parents are watching. So if you're watching mom and dad, I hope you're proud. <laughs> it's not about how you look, it's about the shot you get. I think our customers are creatives and I think they're gonna enjoy the flexibility and the opportunity to do it. That's actually like a fairly timeless debate that you and I have, because I would argue that a lot of our customers care very much how they look also. I'm not take a long time. they don't care how they look. I, I think it's a nice mix. There's a good mix. There are certainly some people out there that will put this on their helmet. And yeah, we I, it'll be a fun debate whether we make a video of you doing that or not. Hey, Sidekick 202, it's not dumb looking at all. I should, you, want, you want like an autograph or something? I don't know, that's probably not very valuable. Uh, thank you. How about that? How about having my attitude? Thank we'll you. Rizomi Photography. Lawrence, your 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 point uh, backing up vanity is being dis just destroyed on the comment board right now. Yeah. I, I waded into that one. I should have been more careful. <laughs> um, the 
So it, what I what we don't have with us right now for this creator kit, and they're probably just around the office somewhere. But so you mentioned that, you know, as we were talking about, it's got the hard locking. Oh, Victor's running around getting some stamp samples. This is the hard locking widget, and then it's got this arm attached to the back, and then the arm. Let me. I'll use my pale skin as a background for you, Brendan, so you can see. It's got the the traditional GoPro mount right here, which is. It's kind of interesting. You mentioned they, they do make really incredible cameras and still manage to do it. And I think people just got so used to GoPro making good stuff. But ad additionally, beyond the cameras, this mount, this sort of architecture that they've just like let go into the world, it just exists out there now. It's so widespread. And so we figure by making this a part of the creator kit architecture, this GoPro mount, all of a sudden, if you get on Amazon or B&H or the GoPro's website, and you've just got literally hundreds of options in terms of where you want to put this thing and sort of <laughs> your level of personal tolerance in terms of how close will my iPhone 12 be to moving pavement or to crashing waves or whatever it is that you want to be capturing with this thing. Um, all right, here is the, uh, I think we call it the POV plate, but this is a part of the POV kit, which was for capture. And we're going to be using a very similar architecture or similar piece here. That will, right now I've got a quarter 20 piece. This comes in the kit. I can swap it out and put in this one. And this one is ARCA compatible. So this fits into the capture camera clip. And this fits into not only our tripod, but any ARCA Swiss tripod. Uh, so you can just imagine I can, I mean, I guess I can just do it if I, this thing's probably not too bad. I, people, I think people can use their imagination on that. And if, in case people are wondering whether it was uh, obnoxious to us to not be able to get the, quarter 20 and the into the same piece as the arca it was but it was it was a challenging uh a challenging problem we couldn't we couldn't actually end up solving plus it ends up being quite useful that thing is good you know that quarter 20 adapter is going to end up living on whichever plate you would like it to live so it's kind of useful to have two separate parts anyhow and are we doing a hot shoe adapter i don't remember if that's a or are we just going to let the quarter 20 be the or yes that's that's correct no, so the quarter sure. 20, again, you know, even more universal than the GoPro mount and even more universal than an Arca Swiss is quarter 20, which there's just so many different places you could put that. We, when we were making the Kickstarter video, we put together a few sort of vlogging rigs um, using all sorts of like, just, there's a great, there's a lot of great brands in the world right now making cool videography rigs, uh, which fairly specialized. And so the quarter 20 lets you interface with all of those pretty easily, which is very cool. All right, cool. Uh, we, we might as well just run through a few more of these hard locking, uh, the hard locking mounts that we've got. So maybe we just do a little, we, let's talk motorcycles real quick. Let's maybe go Maybe you do, do your history, your personal history with motorcycles in like two minutes or less. Oh, good God. No, I can't, I can't even come close. I have, I have laid them down repeatedly. I've gotten them stolen repeatedly. I've gotten four motorcycles stolen, one including last week. It just showed back up on the block next to me um, after State Farm Insurance paid out on it. I've had some rotten luck with motorcycles, but I love them. I love them so much. They're just so incredibly slick for getting around the city. And I think anyone who rides a motorcycle just gets it. We don't need to gush about that too much, but just incredible machines. One day, if I ever get a garage here in San Francisco, I'll get one again. Um, but let's talk about motorcycles because I, it's, it's funny, both with bike and with motorcycle, these are massive industries that Peak Design has had no part in before. But there's been a ton of overlap between those of us on the Peak team who ride bikes and who ride motorcycles and love these, love these sports, hobbies, transportation methods, whatever they are to you. A um, lot of love for two-wheeled transportation. And we are making a serious entrance into these markets and super excited to start talking to these customers who might know nothing about peak design because they didn't consider themselves photographers prior. And obviously there's a lot of competition in the world of mounting motorcycles, um, or excuse me, mounting phones to motorcycles. And Max Maloney, uh, the lead engineer who's designed these products, is a very committed motorcyclist himself. He's got a beautiful uh, Honda CB450, I think, that he built up. 
um, much with his own two hands. He's a very impressive mechanic. And right now, Max is and has been very busy at work addressing the vibration issues. So phones have been on bikes for a long time. As phones have started to adopt more sophisticated optical image stabilization, um, the kind of the, the phone mounting architect or world has had to make changes to it to put vibration damping in it. And Max's approach right now is just incredibly detailed, incredibly thoughtful in measuring the existing products that are out there right now and their vibration damping performance and our kind of prototype vibration damping at this point. You know, we're fortunate to be able to enter this market after these problems have already been encountered. And if we didn't address them, you know, with our brand new offering, shame on us. Um, so we're addressing them and we're doing so very carefully, very thoughtfully. In addition to our internal testing, we're going to be sending all these products down to a third party testing lab in Southern California and making sure that they're in full agreement that our vibration damping is up to the task of preserving your, you know, your thousand plus dollar uh, phones. Uh, uh, that's, I mean, I've, I saw a joke. I don't know if you were joking or not. Was that on Slack earlier? Getting Der David Berry riser. You know, our uh, for anyone who backed the tripod Kickstarter, we just found that one of the world's foremost tripod enthusiasts, a, a, a guy pursuing his PhD at Stanford, just happened to live in our backyard, and so we were able to grill him about like, okay, help us optimize this thing for reducing vibration. Um, whether or not we can wrangle him in to try and do some validation on our bike mounts is one thing, but I think it did set the bar in terms of like testing is not only a necessary part of this, but like it's a fun thing to sort of share with the backers, right? Like you, we can get into the weeds and the details because I think those of you guys following along the, you know, Kickstarter community is like a bunch of, everyone's pretty, you know, early adopter, everyone's fairly tech savvy. And like, if we're going to get in there and show some graphs about, vibration going away and damping that kind of stuff like people are into it so i think that's gonna be a good one i've seen a lot of people commenting about this specific topic with the motorcycle mounts and so i think it's a uh, exciting topic to dive in on people want to know why we're not making an armband lawrence it's because everyone in the office has such strong and big muscles that every time we try to make one they just snap right off and we're trying really hard to figure out if there's some sort of material no that's not true. I'm pretty flabby right now. Why aren't we? Why aren't, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we want to make. Why? Why can't we? There's we can't launch everything, right? You know. I, I, that that's the point. It, uh, I think it's absolutely a product that we're going to get to, especially if we see the demand there. We did make some early goes at it. Um, when we looked into the into the kind of the hardcore running market, it seemed like people had had kind of fallen in love with the super light waist belt um, because really people really prioritize. Um, that the weight of that phone not be jiggling around like you know when it's out on your arm it's got some inertia to it every time you run it's a little bit of energy being lost there that's a lot less true when it hangs out on your sacrum there's just a lot less movement there and so that's kind of become the preferred place but it's not the only reason that people are using an arm man those who are just doing more casual working out workouts weightlifting etc like you lawrence you know in the nautilus um yeah dude and the free for sure. Um, I saw someone has to go and really wants us to talk about wallet. So should we just dive we in on it? It's it's yeah, a, I know it's one people really wallet. want to talk more about. Yeah. Let, let her rip and give give, oh. give a shout out to Rachel Roberts, who's just been unbelievable in pushing forth prototypes on this product. And unlike so many of our prototypes where we send them in, I mean, it's a CNC machine that cranks these things out. The the crafting in this case was actually done by Rachel very very talented pattern maker um young and early into her career but really impressed the whole team here very much so i should say the i'll, I'll do a 360 on this one this one's a, an earlier prototype so it still has we were testing out different options with having what we call the boss which is a positive of the negative shape that's on the back of the case the the, the production wall it's not going to have the boss is that correct pete i mean that's that's but very likely the, the case. I would I would say ninety percent likely at this point. Okay, so there's that, still you know again there's a lot of there's some stuff that is just going to evolve as these products come along, and we'll keep you guys posted on it. But 
I can show you right away. So we'll put it back into flat mode. And I've got my prototype case here. And it's just a fairly, it's a blind attachment. You hear a satisfying click in the wall. It's on there now. Um, we've seen in sort of both our firsthand experience and then a lot of, a lot of sort of talk in the blogosphere right now that MagSafe's initial offering, the magnet strength, is a little... It's, it seems like it's less than what people expected, which is which is interesting to see. Um, certainly, ours is a little. I mean, I'd say we're right on the money. Like it is, it is a very satisfying amount of magnet force. We're still tuning all that in, of course, but definitely a priority for us to have it be a great intuitive experience. Um, so then I'll just kind of run on this. Oh, camera cut out. It's back. Here's some noise down the hallway. Uh, okay, so I can op open up the flap right here. This is a really incredible feature. The flap has a little magnet on it, and so this is your way you access into the cards that you're carrying. So you reach your fingernail under, pull the flap up, and when I've got that flap up, all I have to do is give it a tug, and the cards deploy. And you can just easily kind of go through them. Which one do you want? I've got all these incredible blank white cards. Yes, sir, if you could just put lunch on this fake card, that would be great. And then when you're done, you put the card back in and you push them, and the flap goes back down. So let me show that again, make sure people got it. So it's open, you just pull the flap, closes, push it back in, and magnet closes the door again. It's, I'll, I'll say that like, as someone who's sort of a lifelong bifold user, like a, you know, this, I was, I was suspicious and skeptical, and now I'm just totally sold. It's so nice. It's such a great way to carry around cards. Um, no, what were you gonna say, Pete? I want to talk to a couple of the, the sincere design challenges that we've had on this. One of those things is uh, variable thickness, right, in, in variable cards. Apple made a play. They designed a beautiful wallet that will fit two cards, I think, maybe some cash. Maybe you can cram it in there. I don't know what happens to that as it begins to kind of put ball out. Um, I haven't had one in my hands yet, to be fair to it. But I can say with, with reasonable certainty, it's not going to be something that can expand to hold eight cards or like eight cards and you get you, you for some reason take that one twenty dollar bill in your in your wallet and you get four dollars change and like you can't carry it um creating expansion to me was really really important and kind of the remarkable thing is that when with this wallet which will will expand considerably i've got cash in here those are the big bills okay that's a big bill right there. Which technically is the same thickness as any other bill. Yes, it is. I just wanted to make sure people know that I, I have a $100 bill. It's very important. Everyone is um, very proud of you, Peter. I know. <laughs> but I, I also want to point out that, um, let's tuck that guy back in there, that the overall thickness of this wallet, right, what, what counts is like when it's in your when it's in your pocket. And this is four millimeters right now. And for that four millimeters, which again, I don't have the Apple wallet yet. I'll be curious to know what the thickness of that is. I'd be shocked if it were thinner than three millimeters. I could e easily see it being four. Um, but it, uh, it certainly doesn't give you the added feature of being able to become a very, very, very useful stand um, that you have with you all the time. Obviously, our mobile tripod is a wonderful product that does have overlap functionality, but this is going to be with you all the time, and it's just incredibly useful. Now, there are definitely those out there who are saying, hey, I want the wallet without uh, this whole portion. You know, Could that be achieved? And yes, of course, that could be achieved. We do have that product. We have not decided to release it at this point. I should say we have that prototype. Um, but we will think about that if there is demand for it. I, you know, personally, for the extra millimeter and a half of thickness that, that is this here, um, I think the function that Lawrence is showing there is well worth it. And I didn't want to kind of clog up our campaign with too many offerings. I also think that just if, if the only utility is that your wallet lives on the back of your phone, but it's also this thing that's separable. I don't know. For, to me, it just felt like slightly, just not quite enough utility. But um, that's certainly the type of thing that we're going to be listening to the cloud on. Um, while this wallet does have a lot of interest and questions, I have a special couple of guests here in 
room 407. Vic, can you cut to Joe's camera real fast? All right, so Tom, lead engineer, Ativ, uh, testing engineer, walk us through it. Is there a mic, is, can Joe's mic pick them up or do I need to relay what they're saying? Go ahead and narrate, man. Okay, I'll narrate, I'll come over this way. So I see a Cannonville road bike. What, what, what were you gonna say, Pete? Six feet. Oh, six feet. Yeah, we got it's yeah, six feet. That's a good. We're doing good. Uh, Cannondale road bike with an outright bike uh, bike mount on it. Oh, get that aperture opened up, Joe. Yeah. What are you going to be showing us today? You. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Or can they hear? Yeah. Oh, there they can hear. Um, I just want to demo the uh, basically the strength robust quick attach mechanism or hard lock system, and just have a quick road bike here. Um, and I have an aluminum buck inside this um, phone case. But you can see how easy it is to throw on and off there. And then to show you how strong it is, just wanted to do that. Oh, that's so that. awesome. Like up by the mount. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> what a legendary <laughs> shot. Keep doing it. Do it again. Yeah. You can't even work out. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. One, two. No, Tom is very strong. That's great. That's such an awesome shot. We'd sort of been, there's there's a lot of, <laughs> as we sort of, we always do this. We launch the Kickstarter and then we look at the page in the video and we're like, what could we have, what could we have explained a little better? Well, how do we tweak this? We got 60 days. Let's tell this story even better. And one of the things as we we're looking at it, it was like, it's, it's, it's beautiful and slim, but do, do people know how strong this thing is? Uh, and so we started to debate what are the ways to show that off. And the engineers are like, we got to lift a bike. You could just, you got to lift the bike with the mount. There you go. There's no other way. So, um, Joe, if you get, get super close before you walk off Tom, just like, just so people see what he's doing specifically, he's got the phone just attached to the mount, which is the magnetic mechanical, uh, interface of slim link. And like we were talking about earlier, the out front bike mount is uh, hard locking. So it's got those teeth and the magnets going. And Tom is just lifting the whole bike by the phone itself, not touching the bike, not touching the mount, just by the phone. So the weight of the bike is going through it. And so this is like probably not how you would carry a road bike around if you were moving it from wherever you're know, about to ride. But as sort of a shorthand quick way to say like, oh, OK, these things are pretty freaking strong. I think it's a it's a good little show off. Show the back of the phone so there's no tricks. Yeah, yeah, no tricks. Hey, what is that? That looks different. That looks like a yeah. trick. <laughs> no, no, that's the front of the phone, isn't it? Show the back of the phone. Oh, it's the case. Yeah, it's the case. Right. <laughs> you just got to. Oh, yeah, do it with mine. Let's, let's make sure there, there's no noise. Oh, yeah? yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. Don't breathe my air. There you go. Yeah. And great there work. you have it. Great work, team. Yeah, great work. There you go. For that storytelling. That demonstration reminded me of going to the reptile reptile gardens in right. South Dakota oh, and doing something strange okay. with like a Komodo dragon. Thank you, Tom. I don't, I don't even know how to respond to that reference. I, 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 it was just a deep family uh, road trip uh, memory I wanted to get out there. Felt people needed to know. Sure, 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 sure. Um, I'm going, I'm just kind of scrolling through the questions on the YouTube video real quick. The, uh, something to keep in mind is that we, there's like a, a lag that goes on where the video has to you know go to YouTube satellite and then come back to your computer or whatever. So the chat and the video are a little off from each other. So you guys are going to be having questions about products we talked about a few minutes ago. So it's good just to kind of get in here real quick and make sure we're not missing anything. Um, Definitely a lot of energy around an armband. And so that is being carefully noted by all of the important decision makers at Peak Design. Um, I think we got some good time in with the wallet. I We could continue to sort of show, just make sure we got that. I don't know, Pete, how far along this hinge is. I think that's a thing. We've kind of talked about the feature of the hinging on this. I don't know if we want to talk just a little briefly about the actual specifics of the hinge. Like what what is mechanically going on with what I'm holding that allows it to have this like very satisfying and you know appropriately tuned in terms of stiffness experience sure. right here? 
Sure. Well, it's actually a really clever hinge design that we kind of happened upon slightly. I don't know if Tom would agree with that or not. What's going on is that um, we the the sheet metal, the steel sheet metal on the back is being bent. Imagine, just imagine, um, imagine it's like holding on like this, right? We've formed this sheet metal in this pattern that is constantly gripping, and it's it's you know slightly it's it's about this diameter, and I was skeptical that we would ever be able to consistently control this diameter, but we have been able to. And then what we do is we shoot a pin through the middle that slightly opens that up and applies a constant friction force. So hinges are <laughs> hinges are interesting little devils. Um, they're a lot easier to make work when you have a larger and larger diameter. Of course, we desire to have a small diameter because we want this thing to be a minimalist wallet in your phone. And so um, I credit Tom for uh, kind of having faith in that manufacturing process that would allow us to pull off a hinge in such small format. Um, but it is it is really it's really excellent. It's confidence inspiring. It's kind of the right sort of Goldilocks, as we like to call it, meaning that it's really nice and stiff. Um, but at the same time, not so hard to get that it's going to break the magnetic force and uh, cause you to have, have an unpleasant experience. Go off hand band with the wallet. That is Rachel herself. I, is she is like kind of, hold on, oh, wait, wait, I got to go into the, what do you that mean, Rachel? Do that. that I could, oh yeah, you can kind of get your fingers in there and get a nice little grip too. Let me see here, what's going on? Pocket insert test. They want to see me put it in a pocket? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. You were in those shorts? Yeah, I got those Bioris on. I'm, almost, I'm practically sponsored by them. You got it? They're a climate neutral brand. Yeah. You know I only buy climate neutral. Has Crocs gone climate neutral? I don't know if you want to do a quick pan down. No, they haven't. We should talk to them. Hey, if Crocs folks are listening, all companies should offset the carbon it takes to make and ship their products. Crocs are entirely made out of what I imagine is a petroleum product, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, while it comes in and out, let me do the back pocket, which is actually where I would keep it. Even what I've been doing, I'm, I'm a rare breed. I put the phone in the back pocket a lot of times. I don't know why I find that so satisfying. But So this is with the phone and the wallet on it, and it's loaded up. I'm trying to give you a good angle, Brendan. There we go. Yeah, fits in easy, comes out easy. Kind of grip around to make sure you're getting the whole thing. And there you go. Something that's kind of nice about the case um, and the wallet is that they're made from, they've got this really great uh, fabric on them. You know, the soft goods team, we've got a lot of experience with fabrics and picking them and testing them. And so we've kind of honed in on a couple of fabrics that are both beautiful and durable, but also go in and out of pocket super easily. Uh, and so that's been kind of like a, a nice benefit of the materials that we're picking for some of these products. Um, we're almost on an hour. So I don't know if we have the time to like, sort of like geek out about all of these different products uh, that are, we should, we should quickly get through the rest of them. Um, something to let people know is that the plan is to do plenty of hangouts over the course of this Kickstarter, both to update you guys on tweaks that happen to the products themselves on feedback that we're getting uh, and to do more stuff where we get, you know, people like Tom and Ativ and people from the design and engineering team to come in and assuming that they are not super busy with what they have to be doing for their job to come in and just like talk with the backers up and take questions and get really into the weeds on the details of these things, which is super cool. Um, let's quickly talk about the tripod because that is, of course, a huge part of this ecosystem. And I think a huge part of this sort of story, sort of like if there was the the missing link of a product that gets us from what have we been doing to what we will also be doing. This little guy is such a great little sibling to our travel tripod. I think that it, it it's not hard to imagine the utility that you would get out of this if you guys are looking at it, but however much you think you would use it, I promise it's even more. So this is sort of a way that I use it a ton this sort of like you just pop the three legs out and you have it in a really nice little kickstand mode. From this mode, also, if you want to do some 
landscape viewing, you don't even have to fiddle with the feet or the legs or anything. You just kind of set it on its side and you're good to go. Um, then of course you can deploy the legs and you've got the built-in ball head that comes from the factory tuned to a really great amount of resistance. But that being said, if that wears down over time or you find that you'd like it to be a little tighter or looser, we've got this embedded and attached uh, hex wrench. Let's get that focus going there. Okay, so it magnetically stows right there in the back of the leg. So you will always have the tool with you. That's a, that's a sort of peak design trademark there also. We trust you guys to make those sorts of adjustments and to know when it's time to make them. So here's the tool to do it. Uh, Actually, back to using this we, thing. We learned our lesson on tripod when we came out with the Kickstarter and didn't have the hex tool built into the tripod. And uh, the backer community is not gonna let us get away with that. So this is a lesson learned, folks. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, and then of course, landscape mode is easily achievable here as well. Here's something, so I was actually using this the other day when my, the, my, I mentioned my parents, they, they're in town right now actually. And so my dad and I went up to the headlands to do some photography. Uh, and we took, you know, we took the 5D and we got a bunch of cool cameras and we're loaded up with peak design gear. But I also took this guy up because if the fog's out, you can get some really fantastic time lapses. And I made a, and maybe this is a thing Rob who designed this already knew, but I was trying to shoot into the wind and I kept finding that the wind would hit the the phone and I kept getting it, it would push itself over. And it's actually a super easy fix. You just rotate it around so that your two legs are facing into the wind and it puts all that energy onto one leg and it just keeps it totally stable. So this thing, I, I haven't found a situation where it can't handle it yet, which for such a tiny little piece of machined aluminum is super exciting. Here, let me pull up the uh, the time lapse I got real quick. Face ID. Oh yeah, like that this way. Oh, let me rotate it back around here. Yeah, yeah. Vic, are you to look Vic at was it? asking. No, no, I was going to show it off. But Vic off. Vic said I should really lay this thing down low, so people how low it can get. Uh, there it is. Just, you know, this is five minutes. You just, well, I, I set it up and let it record. And then I went out and did some other stuff. I was, I was using the other camera and doing some photography. And like, this is awesome. This is, and this is just, this is the camera app that comes with the phone. I haven't even like, didn't even open up. Like Moments got a really cool uh, photography app. There's a couple out there for, especially for night photography. But I don't know. It's the sort of thing where, I, and I've been shooting, I literally shoot professionally. I shoot for peak design. I'm shooting photography all the time. And there are so many things like time-lapse photography that like, I don't really do with my 5D, uh, but with my iPhone, absolutely. And anything that sort of encourages me to get out there and make some cool content, I'm so pumped up about that. So this is certainly a skew that gets me all excited. Um, Man, almost at three. So we, sh we shouldn't go for too much longer, but let's quickly just look at the rest of the field, what we got out here. Here's another case. Um, this is the charging car mount. And so it's got a space here where the VHB sticky attachment, essentially industrial tuned double-sided tape, tape will stick to your dashboard in the appropriate place. You position this to get it where you want it to be angled. And then blind attachment. Oh, missed it. You, you missed. I missed. There you go. Not a strength problem, more a miss problem. Try to blind it. You can do it. Let's talk about uh, why we chose a small VHB pad that is best to hook to a dash edge or a console. Look. We've all had, you know, big honking uh, suction cups, and those work well on, on glass. They work a lot less well on dashes. Um, we've all played around with vent mounts, and, you know, we might, we might one day have a vent mount, which goes more toward having a portable car mount. Um, obviously, when you put the VHB on, it's not intended to be removed and then utilized again in another location. We give two VHB pads, but you're not going to do that on repeat. Um, the reason we chose a small footprint and a relatively short standoff from the car 
is because it is the perfect balance between how much force we can get on that adhesive, how much moment we can create having that thing hang over and give you like a really rock solid connection. I know the car mount probably, it's tough to convey that this product is really that interesting or that worth it. But compared to other car mounts you have used, it is so confidence inspiring and so enjoyable to put on there and take off. You can, you can, it's, it's the difference is being able to like roughly handle your phone and just throw it on there and it works and grab it off really quickly. You don't have to be ginger about it. You don't have to worry about getting that vent thing out of alignment. And it just makes, um, just like every one of these products, it makes using your phone that much more enjoyable for all those things that we use them. So uh, car mount, like everything else we've done here, is an exceptional step up to what you have used before. I promise. So Elliot has a good question about why doesn't the car mount have the, uh, the male adapter piece, which would be the boss. And so this is a good time to sort of quickly go through that. If I hold up one of our hard locking, so this is one of the motorcycle mounts, which does have the boss, which is the positive side of the slim link square, squircle, you know, rectangle with corners and then the teeth. So the flat ones, this is purely a magnetic connection. And this is what we're calling the soft lock. And there's a family of, uh, you know, a part of our family of products attaches via this mag magnetic uh, architecture. Both of the car mounts, the desk mount, the wallet, the tripod, the wall mount, uh, and these are things where the strength of the magnets, and we're determining that strength with the strength of the magnets that we're picking, we have tested it and it is not just sufficient, it's delightful. It's sort of the perfect amount for strength and security and also just like a super confidence inspiring sort of just, you just pop your thing on there, where, whether it's on the car or on the wall or on your desk charger, you just know that it's on there and you don't have to worry about it. So that being said, the reason that some of these other SKUs, if you're on a motorcycle or a bicycle or our creator kit, the reason that those have this additional, the teeth and the boss, which to your question, Elliot, is this the positive side here. Uh, that's just for an additional layer of security that in very specific instances, like on your motorcycle or a car, you need that level of strength and just you can't have an accidental brush of your phone result in a phone dropping off if you're going, you know, 80 down the freeway or if you're going down some sort of single track mountain biking experience. Uh, so the difference between the two is dependent uh, on the application. And we've given a lot of thought to that. Um, then of course, the exciting thing is that Apple has come out with their standard and we're gonna be able to interface with it with the MagSafe stuff. Uh, and so there'll be a lot of similarities between the way that we lay out the magnets and the way that Apple does so that the soft locking accessories should work seamlessly with all these new Apple products in addition to ours. What were you gonna say, Pete? Oh, I lost your, lost your audio there, Pete. Oh, there we go. I there muted go. myself out of courtesy. Um, mobile tripod right now has a boss. We're in the process of Rob is prototyping um, these products without the boss. So I, this product, probably will not look exactly like this by the time it's all said and done. If we're comfortable with how the product can function on both a bare Apple iPhone and, and or at least a cased iPhone using, using Maglatch, then we are going to work to remove this boss. So long as the experience of using this product is as good as it currently is with the boss, um, that's going to require additional magnets in all likelihood. So these are the types of things that we're, we're, we're very, very hard at work cranking on right now. Absolutely. And I, I see a few questions out there already about like, um, making sure that there's the appropriate amount of strength and sort of confidence when you're using it, especially if you're gonna be doing any sort of filming uh, with the tripod. You know, we show off in the video sort of using it in a handle way like this and you know, we will, run it through the paces and will, to Pete's point, only put it out there if it passes the right amount of sort of tests. We want it to be as dialed in as possible so that you can get maximum utility out of this thing. Um, I see Mr. talon has got a question out there. Will these items only be created for Apple products? No, the answer is no. We've got 
cases that will be for new model iPhones uh, and Samsung Galaxies. And then the universal adapter, which we haven't talked a ton about today, this thing allows you to take any smartphone right away when the, as the campaign is just fulfilling its first products and you can take any phone and adapt it to our system. So this thing has that, again, that incredible 3M VHB, uh, just awesome double-sided adhesive. And you can stick this to the back of most phones. You don't want to put it on glass, but certainly anything made of plastic, you pop this thing on there. There's a lot of good cases out there that other companies make that also would make a great uh, sort of receiving side for this adapter. And then with the adapter, you've opened yourself up to use any of our soft locking products and any of our hard locking products. And the answer is yes, they will work. They'll be functionally similar. Um, the, the magnets are going to be the back, the, the same in the adapter as they will be in the case. Now, right. it's just like we cut this part out of the case and right. made it a little sticky. Yep. Uh, someone wants to see how the thickness of the universal adapter, which I don't know if there's still going to be some tuning on that uh, as time goes on. It's pretty thin, though. I think that's what, I, what it's going to be. Yeah. And so the thickness of our everyday case is about the same as sort of a, what I would call a standard phone case. So if I put this on the back, you can get a, a pretty good sense. If you wanted to pop this on the back of a different phone case, this is, this is pretty accurate as to what that would look like from a stack height. And then again, you know, so let's say you have the universal adapter and then you want to put the tripod on it. It is still a remarkably thin stack height. The, the universal adapter, I think it's worth mentioning, Pete, that like this is not some sort of after, you know, uh, some sort of thing that we're just like, well, we don't want to make cases for everybody. So let's just make this thing. Uh, this was a this has been a fairly arduous sort of development process. And I think it sounds like it's still pretty ongoing to to dial this in as a little product. Well, certainly we have to adapt it uh, likewise to MagSafe. And, and that's part of the work that's going on. Another part of the work that's going on is one of those special treats that we're not announcing about yet, but um, later on in the campaign, we'll be bringing up some um, products that I think make this system even better, ones that are pretty near and dear to my heart. Um, Ooh, so. Teasing, it's so exciting. Well, it is Friday. All right, I'm gonna quickly just, just blow through these just because oh, video team's having another few beers and because there's probably one of those beers with my name on it. So the other things we haven't talked about today, but we'll definitely get all sorts of time in the sun as we do more updates in the future, the uh, stand, the uh, the desk stand or the charging stand. Um, so this thing has a charging, what we call the charging head. It's the same architecture as our charging car mount, USB-C on the bottom, come out and go over here. And then you just put your phone on it and you're good to go. Uh, this has got a, another tuned hinge so that you can have it either in sort of a flat mode as if it were a puck, or you can have it at any number of sort of viewing angles that make the most sense for you, whatever you want. Um, machined aluminum, a really nice piece of hardware, a great addition to the desk. Uh, you can easily pop this thing into landscape mode. And here's the thing that's really awesome. I and mean, we took a, a fair amount of time to figure this out. It doesn't need to be stuck onto your desk or anything. We've got a little, some rubber on here to kind of give it a little bit of grip. And then you just peel your phone off and it comes right off. It's I actually, yeah, I want to make a comment about this. Um, the Apple MagSafe charger is going to live on people's desks, right? And it's got a small footprint and it's very thin. But the thing is, is that it still requires, I mean, you need to place your phone there. And so it, it's going to end up taking the same amount of footprint on your nightstand or your desk um, eventually, because that phone is going to have to go and live on that. We were very thoughtful about the fact that when you pick up your phone, you don't actually want your charger to travel with it, right? That's actually kind of an annoying feature to have. So uh, we put a lot of thought into making sure that this can, product can be rolled off and uh, even, yes, without, without, without holding it like you do with Lawrence, you can get this phone off it. So it's just one handed attachment. So I kind of peel from the bottom and then come That's down a little bit. Just peeling from the bottom is all you need. He's putting a little extra flair into it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I'm a bit of a, I'm kind of showy. Exactly, exactly. Was that a, you think this is good footage there? 
Is this a good shot, Victor? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fun, huh? Um, someone asked how much this weighs. I don't really know offhand yet. This weighs. It's a good amount. It's a it's a, it's a amount where this is a an at home product, not a travel product. You know. Right. Like, I would I would I would not travel with it unless you know weight's no issue. If weight's no but, issue, it's a beautiful thing to have with you. Yeah, um, it's pretty beautiful. It's a, it's a this was Max Maloney again. Max was uh, the design engineer, and he was spearheading the motorcycle mounts. And this was another project that he took a lead on. Um, of course, working with Art, who is our lead industrial designer and has his hands on everything too. Um, but this is just like a super sleek piece of hardware. It's very exciting. Um, okay, and so one more thing to talk about. And one more thing. This is definitely the most infomercially I've ever felt in my five years at Peak Design. I will say that also. <laughs> I'm going to show you this right now because my manager's out of the room. I'm going to throw <laughs> these in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, the wall mount. So, give me give me a sweet zoom in there, Brendan. Um, oh, a lot of <laughs> magnets on the table. A lot of magnets. The wall mount comes in two colors. You can get it in charcoal or bone. Um, Yes, the inspiration for us using Bone as a name for our colorway is from American Psycho, uh, the business card scene specifically. Um, nice coloring. What? Yeah, that's Bone. And the, and the type is, is something called Cillian Rail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the gist on this thing. It's got a big magnet. This is. I don't think they're going to have this clear back. Uh, in production, but it's pretty sweet to see it right here. So this is our current iteration. These magnets in the corners are the current architecture of our magnets for the system. As Pete's mentioned a few times, that's evolving. Uh, and we'll we'll keep you in the loop as soon as the lawyers say that like, yeah, it's safe to share what you're doing. And then this big chunker of a magnet in the middle is specifically for the wall mount so that you could either take this thing and use the double-sided tape and stick it to whatever surface you want to, or Anything that's magnetic, you essentially can put this onto that. It's a very strong magnet, so it can take a thing that's fairly magnetic and give you then a dedicated landing spot for your phone. Um, it's a super handsome and low profile little thing. We kind of, I, I was surprised. I've, I've mentioned this a few times as, as we were like putting together all the photo collateral for this Kickstarter. The wall mount is one of the products that like totally surprised me the most in that when we were taking pictures of it, it was just so easy and intuitive. And it just, it surprised me as a thing that I think is gonna be a bit of a dark horse. People are gonna really love these things in the years to come. Um, so again, my manager's out of the room. We'll do them right now as a two pack. I'll throw them in to every order. No, we're not throwing them in every order, but it's definitely a thing worth adding on. Uh, we did the bone colorway, so if you've got lighter color walls, it it has a it can be a little stealthier on those walls. Um, that's just going to be more of a personal preference. Functionally, they're both the same. Cool, Lawrence. I got two cool. percent battery, man, on this on this MacBook. That I seems as good a reason as any for us I to to wander so. down. Hey, quick shout out to the to my to my homies from the Carumba crew. Nice to see you joining this. We're finally making products that you guys can enjoy, right? <laughs> Not a lot of picture takers in the bunch. Not a lot of tripods being sold with that college crew. Oh, we're get, I'm getting a few tech, a few things to address. I got some texts about the desk mount is roughly 280 grams. Um, it will come with a cable uh, and a wall adapter, unlike certain other product companies that are making huge releases right now. Uh, of course, the car charger. Well, <laughs> uh, we love we love them though. Whoever they may be, they're an incredible company. Don't sue us. Uh, this. A uh, car charger will also come with a USB-C and a uh, adapter, power adapter for the car itself. Um, people were asking, we were talking a lot about soft, uh, soft lock versus hard lock and the sort of soft lock not having any bump on it. And the pictures on the Kickstarter are an earlier prototype. They show a car mount with the boss, with that positive bump. That will not be in the production version. By the end of the campaign, we'll have updated all that collateral. But as you guys know, we're, we're just still actively developing and testing and honing in these products. So there's going to be a lot of little tweaks like that that we're going to keep you in the loop on. As always, ask us about it because we're happy to answer it. Um, so 
Hopefully we got to most of the questions. We've said it a hundred times already. We're gonna do this more. We're gonna get other designers in here. You don't have to listen to Pete and I kind of just go on and on and quote American Psycho for the rest of this campaign, unless that's what you want, then we can keep coming in here and doing that. You know, who knows? Um, thank you guys for joining us today. Pete, your battery's probably almost out. I don't know if you got any quick closing thoughts. I'm hanging out at two. I'm good. Smash that subscribe button. Hit like or something. something. I, think I, got, I think I got eight Twitter followers right now. So, you know, hop on. Oh, Peter Daring on Twitter if, if you want. That sounds yeah. fun. Super, <laughs> super insightful. All right. Big props to the video crew for being out here on a Friday, and which I guess is a work day. It's a Friday. You guys are assholes. Back to work, everybody. <laughs> All right. See you Bye. guys soon. Thank you. Thank you.